presidency. But boy, we've come a long way, as Coach, Coach Holtz was just pointing out there. Yep. You know, we're not where we want to be, but we're not where we we're definitely not where we used to be. And he thinks that's a good thing. Yep. So, Coach Holtz is a smart guy. He's not gonna, you know, he's he wants to kind of butter his bread on on both sides a little bit. But uh, I think he likes President Trump. I think oh, yeah. he does. Yeah. I think so too. I think he definitely does. I've got a guy coming up next who's going to break a lot down for us as we head into 2018. Later on, I've got an incredible poll for you. Just came hot off the presses today from the Missouri Scout, and it's um, it's some statewide polling numbers. Awesome. And it, it breaks down everything from President Trump's uh, approval rating in the state, Governor Greitens' approval rating, um, right track, wrong track for the country. And then, Ken, what you and I were talking about during the break, the current numbers on the U.S. Senate race – and they only pulled they only pulled two people. They pulled Josh Hawley, Attorney General, versus sitting Senator Claire McCaskill. <clears throat> awesome. And then the auditors race. They only pulled two people in that too. I, and this wasn't my poll. I didn't commission this poll. It's just something I subscribe to, and, and this is what I got. So <clears throat> next we're going to speak to uh, Lowell Ponty, who is a internationally known speaker, author, uh, newsman extraordinaire. Created all sorts of, of great businesses through his lifetime. Uh, his articles have appeared in the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Los Angeles Times, many other publications. He's been looking ahead at 2018, what to expect. Lowell Ponty, thanks uh, for uh, taking some time on a Sunday night. Welcome to the Tim Jones Show. Tim, it is a great honor to be on with you. I mean, my ancestors used to live in St. Louis back around 1850. Oh, you've done a little research on that, too. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah, my ancestors were utopian socialists who came from France, yeah. part of the Icarian movement. <laughs> Uh, of course, they were disillusioned after a while. The commune they established finally in Corning, Iowa, broke down, uh, as they all have historically, unless they became joint stock companies like Amana or Oneida. Oh, by the way, greeting from California. Yeah, are you? The are you? national capital of legal recreational marijuana, at least briefly for a moment. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, I mean, we have a world in which on CNN they now demonstrate how to use marijuana for our young people. But on CNN, you mentioned Jake Tapper. Yes. Jake is an old friend of mine. used to come on my show before he became famous. Really? And, and what's interesting about Jake, although he tries to be, in his own way, a very honest journalist, he is torn by his view of the world. For example, do you realize Jake Tapper used to be the PR guy for handgun control? Oh, okay. You know that? I mean, this I did not know a, that. A very far left guy. Anyway, and he, tr- he tries to pretend to be objective. He he tries. Well, he, he actually, he, I think he yeah. does, in his way, think he's a more fair journalist. Sure. And at CNN, I mean, you can be merely a socialist and be considered on the right. Yeah, so, you'd be on the right side of the aisle. Uh, I mean, that's you have for to sure. Understand that among the left networks, for example, MSNBC. What does it stand for? It stands for Marxist Socialist NBC, <laughs> which is kind of. Uh, extraneous as a description because all of NBC is like that. Hey, Lowell, before before we get into this article you wrote uh, right after the uh, the Christmas holiday, uh, I, I'm sure you're going to be running down to uh, watch the Golden Globes right after we speak to you tonight, right? Uh, I was talking earlier, that must be the most depressing affair tonight. Uh, well, you know, the Golden Globes is foreign journalists who have a basically anti-U.S. bias to begin with. Mm. So they'll feel right at home at that event. I, on the other hand, am a member of the Screen Actors Guild, and I vote on their awards ah, okay. for actors. But but it's a, uh, a fun, fun thing to look at. Oh, I meant to mention, speaking of drugs, we are, of course, under chemical warfare attack by China, which pours so much fentanyl, carfentanil, and other opioids into the U.S., but they got a large share of the 216 body count, 64,000 American drug overdoses. It killed more Americans than died during the entire Vietnam War, did it in one year. More Americans die every three weeks than died in the 9-11 terrorist attacks from opioids, a lot of which come in from China. Yeah, I mean, you you, you are uncovering things that, you know, no one wants to pay attention to because it's not as exciting as the latest treatise to come out about whether or not the White House is dysfunctional under President Trump. Uh, you're talking about real-world problems. And one of the things you wrote about on uh, just just last week were some of your expert predictions for 2018, uh, the dawn 
of the petro yen, will it doom the dollar? Now, what do you mean by that? What the heck is the petro yen? The petro yuan is is the petro version of the Chinese currency. You have to understand, we're talking about uh, what President Trump was addressing and what National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster addressed just before him when McMaster said that China is committing economic aggression against us and is undermining international order and stability. The order they're referring to is what we set up after World War II. So the U.S. would stand as a colossus over the world, stand on two legs, one economic, one military. And here's what's happening to those two legs. Under the Bretton Woods Agreement after World War II, uh, all of our allied or friendly nations in the world agreed that the dollar would be pegged to gold and their currencies would be pegged to the dollar, and so we would have a stable international Mm -hmm. monetary Mm -hmm. order. Unfortunately, Richard Nixon in 1971 had watched Lyndon Johnson and John F. Kennedy fund the Vietnam War by printing vast numbers of dollars. And suddenly countries like France were coming to us and saying, you know, we've got this mountain of paper dollars you printed. We'd like to trade it for all the gold in Fort Knox. (laughs) And at a certain point, Richard Nixon just said, well, I'm severing the tie between gold and the dollar. The dollar fell by about a third in value almost immediately in international trade. But he then turned in desperation to Saudi Arabia and said, here's what we need. We need you to agree with us that you will sell your oil only for U.S. dollars. No other currency. This will maintain our status as the world reserve currency, the dominant currency, which is a very valuable thing to the U.S. Uh, And in exchange, we will pay for that in blood, Mm. the blood of our soldiers, the blood of our military. Uh, So we suddenly invented, in place of the gold dollar, the reliable dollar, we invented the petrodollar, Mm -hmm. in effect. Now, what China has done is announced that it's going to set its own currency up in a similar way. It is going to launch the petro yuan and buy and sell oil on the international market as a a bartering agent. Uh, And its contracts will be backed with gold. So they will be backed by more than U.S. contracts, which is basically promissory notes of our politicians. Mm -hmm. Imagine how valuable that is. Right. Uh, So that's the challenge to our economic status. The dollar could be losing its singular power as the world currency, and that would not be good. Meanwhile, militarily, President Trump said uh, that our NATO allies in Europe, remember, after World War II, we put a nuclear umbrella over Europe in the form of the Atlantic Alliance and NATO. Right. And that freed them up so they didn't have to spend their money on the military. They could build welfare states. <laughs> and they did very well. <laughs> and so the world's liberals are envious of European welfare states. They say their ideal in the world is what they call getting to Denmark, <laughs> even though we could do a half hour just on Denmark and why it's not really socialist. But the point being... Europe announced just four days before President Trump spoke on December 14th of 2017 uh, that 23 of of the European Union's 28 members had agreed to PESCO, P-E-S-C-O, the Permanent Structured Cooperation Agreement, whereby individual national militaries in Europe will gradually be put under European command And eventually, the very military forces will be transferred to a European command altogether. In other words, part of the erasure of national boundaries and nations in Europe will be that countries won't have their own militaries anymore. And by the way, this is a military outside of NATO. This will be under European command. Why would Europe want such a thing other than their old imperialist ambitions? Mm -hmm. Well, they'd want it because they don't ever want a, a, a United Kingdom in England to leave again. They want to be able to say to European countries, guess what? If you say you're leaving, there are going to be 50,000 European troops in your capital in 24 hours. And you ain't going to go. That, that, that in fact, is what Abraham Lincoln did to Baltimore, for example, during the war between the states. Uh, He he said militarily occupied Baltimore, had cannons pointed down all the streets, and said, you ain't going to join the Confederacy. Even though it had not joined the Confederacy, still he was not going to give them that chance. Uh, Five members of the EU uh, agreed that it was not join that they would not join PESCO. Denmark, Ireland, Portugal, Malta, and the United Kingdom, which is still trying to leave, 
By the way, all this talk about Russia, I just would like to add parenthetically. Yes. Uh, the U.S. is the world's number one economic power. We have a, a gross domestic product of about between 18 and $19 trillion a year. The next greatest power in the world is the EU. Right. Not it Russia. It has about <laughs> $16.4 trillion. China, $11.2 trillion. Japan, $4.49 trillion. Germany, $3.47 trillion. Where do you guess Russia is in that list? Uh, even further down, I'm going to imagine. Russia is number 12 in the right. world economic powers with $1.28 trillion. That's less than the United Kingdom, less than France, less than India, less than Italy, less than Brazil, less than Canada, yeah. less than South Korea. If California succeeded <laughs> and was its own nation, it would have double the GDP of Russia. So, Lowell, you know, all this hyperventilating every single day for going on 14 months now from by the media about Russia, instead of focusing on things like we just talked about, this potentially very destabilizing move that China could be making with the Petro Yuan, why why does the American liberal media is what is the what is the fantasy about Russia? Are they more exciting? Uh, they, they they like Putin on horseback better. I, 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 I don't get it. I think they'll latch on to any excuse for removing Trump from office or declaring his election yes, invalid. There you go. If in fact the American people voted for Trump and rejected them, I mean, well, for example, Nancy Pelosi just declared in a profoundly religious statement <laughs> that the Republican tax cut is Armageddon. Yes, it people are going to die in the streets. Why, yes. why would she say such a thing? Very simple. Because they had worked out a political structure, a con game, very similar to what the Romans did 2,000 years ago. And that is, the Romans didn't collect their own taxes in a place like Judea. The Romans would have a bidding war between various consortia, and they would bid. And the high bidder would get the right to collect the taxes in Caesarea or Tiberias or Jerusalem or whatever. And what that meant is they would pay a fixed amount, their bid, directly to the empire, and then the empire would give them the authority to squeeze whatever money they could out of the people. Now, what do we do? Uh, under Democrats, we massively tax business. Even with the Reagan tax cuts and so on, business was, has been paying 46% of all its income right off the top in federal, state, and local taxes on average, uh, which is a devastating burden. I mean, it's, it's basically half of what they make. Uh, but we don't talk much about that because that doesn't mean we're taxing the people, says Nancy Pelosi. In fact, Democrats mm -hmm. get up on their soapbox and say, look at those greedy capitalists and how much they're charging you for their products, without, of course, telling you that half the price of a lot of those products, like a new car, is really passed on taxes. Absolutely. You. And yeah. so it, it's a very cunning game that they've played, and, and Trump is going right at the heart of that Democrat game. He absolutely is. Lowell, we, we do have to run. Where, where's the best place for folks to uh, read up more on some of the things we've been talking about tonight? Do you have a place online that some of this resides or something you want to point folks to? Well, I have a wonderful offer for you. If you would okay. like absolutely free yes. copy of our 250-page book, I say our, I write, I've written seven books with Craig Smith. Craig Smith, every yes. Every week with, uh, Neil, with Neil Cavuto on Fox Business. Uh, Money, Morality, and the Machine is our latest book, 250 pages. You can get a copy absolutely free and postpaid. It will not cost you a penny. It's worth it just for the forward by Pat Boone alone. And you get it by calling a toll-free number, 800-630-1492. That's 800-630-1492. Fourteen ninety two, like the year Columbus sailed. I, I got it, and I will repeat that throughout the evening. Lowell Ponte, thank you so much for joining us. The author of the new book, Money, Morality, and the Machine. Lowell, you have a great 2018. We'll check back with you uh, later uh, in the year to find out how some of those projections and predictions are going. Okay, thanks so much, Tim, and, and good luck with your show. Thank you so much. You have a great Happy night. New Happy New Year. Low Ponty, boy, that guy is a wealth of information, wow, a deep yeah. well and wealth of information. <laughs> hey, this is Tim Jones. It's the Tim Jones Show. I have got a fantastic media malpractice for you up next here on the Tim Jones Show with none other than the fraud Republican himself, David Brooks. <laughs> Tim Jones Show. This is 
Armageddon. This is a very big deal. On FM News Talk 97.1. It's meant to be, it'll be, it'll be. Baby, just let it be. Hey folks, Jamie Allman here. Download the free Next Radio app on your phone and listen 